Hello. This short movie should explain to you how to get data out of Igor, out of my packages, when they are generated in my packages, how to get them out, so you can use them in other packages. So let's say that you have collected data on a USAX instrument, and so you used USAX data package Indra to reduce the USAX data into a useful data set. Uh, or you, uh, you used uh, Nika package, which is this sas 2 d package, so you use that to reduce data either out of my packages, uh, my instrument, or uh, from your instrument, or some other device. Uh, <clears throat> so at the end of the day, there are data inside Igor Pro, which you may want to fit in SAS View, SAS Fit, your own tools which you wrote, um, you know, in, in even Excel, I have seen people using Excel. So there's a lot of options which you may want to do. How do you get the data out easily? Now, for that, I have to first explain to you that there are two types of naming systems which are different, or actually with this IRENA results, uh, there are three. So let's start with what data we have. So if you generated USAX data, inside the data browser. If you don't know what data browser is, if you don't see it, just open it up with the data browser from the data menu in Igor. If you have reduced the data in USAX folder itself, <coughs> you will have a some set of folders which will have your sample name. So here's a sample name 3 under bar 1 0665. That is a folder containing two types of data. Um, and you can concentrate on these ones. There is a SMRQ, vector intensity, uncertainty or error, and DQ, which is a Q resolution. These four are Slitsmere USAX data. Slitsmere USAX data is what naturally come out of our USAX instrument. And, uh, but they are slit smeared with a slit length, which varies, um, not per sample, but per setup. So if you look on that, there is a slit length somewhere. Here's a wavelength, there's a slit length here. So whereas a Q resolution of our instrument in the high resolution direction is 10 to minus 4 inverse angstroms, a slit length, which is in the other direction, is 0 0.02, 0 0.025, 0 0.03. Depends on wavelength mostly. So... <coughs> These are slit smear data. The problem is, as far as I know, at this time, November 2017, no other piece of software in the world can reliably uh, model slit smear data from our instrument. Um, I don't believe anyone has all the necessary uh, setups or conditions or configurations available. So there's another choice. You can either desmear doing data reduction or you can desmear separately as a separate tool in IRENA. You can take the slitsmear data and generate this desmear data. It's a DSM Q vector, desmeared Q vector, intensity, uncertainty, error. These are the numbers or, or data which you can model in anything. All of the rules and conditions are valid for these. Now, that's a USAC segment. If you, since our instrument collects data in three different segments, then you can match it together with the SAGS data that would be here. And then it's still USAX type data, but it's only, I match only the DSMIR data, they're longer by the SAX segment. And then you can actually attach to it a WAX data, but it's not necessary. Now, if you use the NICA package, the data are coming out as what is called QRS. So if you look on it's different. Each one of your samples still has a folder. That's here. But inside that folder is are not DSM or SMR data. That's not applicable for uh, pinhole type data from these detectors. What you find in there is Q under bar and a sample name. R, which is an intensity under bar, S, which is uncertainty, and W, which is actually the Q resolution. So these four waves now contain the same data. And in IRENA, the way this is recognized is by going here and checking these checkboxes. So you have USAX data, and you would have, for example, this. And these are DSMIR data in a USAX. You can put also their slit smear version in there. 
and let me just recolor that. And if you look on this, this is the slit smeared version. Slit smearing is effectively some kind of running average. It's a like a rolling average with that slit length. So you can see that the intensity actually in a slit smeared case looks lower. It's less dynamic range. If you desmear the data which we collected, which were about seven, six, seven decades in intensity, you desmear that you actually gain dynamic range in intensity because you actually reversed it slit smearing. So these are data we collected originally. We ran them through a routine which desmeared them. And so this are pinhole equivalent. Here you can do a standard guinea analysis of this knee. Here you cannot. Here you actually have to have the slit smearing built in the routine model. Um, there are a few other things in here, but this one here, this red curve, is what you can analyze with any package which there is uh, for small angle scattering analysis. The blue one you have to analyze only with IRENA. You would get the same results with IRENA with slit smear data because it has the slit smearing properly built in, but it means you have to do it in IRENA in Igor Pro, and you may be more familiar with other, other types of data. If you now log in, look inside here, here is, for example, the SACS data set. So that's where our SACS data are. So let's say SACS. And then if you look on wax, you have a wax here. And so this is about the diffraction data. We have a humpy here. We get some diffraction peaks here. People may want to analyze this and they need to analyze this in a specialized powder diffraction packages like GSS2 or so, whereas they may want to analyze these data sets. Now, oops. Um, the thing is, if you take data and we, for example, merge the USEX data, if you merge our USEX data desmeared with the pinhole sacks, you get this final curve, this one out the way here. So actually, USEX plus sacks together will get you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine decades in intensity over four decades in Q. It's actually very cool in the results. There's actually a third set of types of data. If you have used IRENA to generate uh, results, uh, so if, for example, you fitted a size distribution, it will be called IRENA results. And so that we would check this checkbox, ignore the can sense. You would check this checkbox and then you could deal with size distributions, unified fit models, or any other result of a modeling. Now, <clears throat> Let's say you would like to use for analysis your own data. Let me just delete this. Uh, you would like to use for analysis of your own data, your own software. And so how do you get it out? Because you have to reduce data from my instrument with my tools. And so now you want to get it out somehow. For that purpose, the IRENA has a export Nexus Kansas or ASCII data. It has a one panel here. You can then go in here and say, I want to export USEX data. If that's what you want to do, you go in, pick, for example, the USEX data. It picks the data here. You can display notes and graphs. You do this. It will show you a graph of the data you're going to export. It will show you what notes you're going to append to it, if you're going to append them, but it allows you to look through it. Then for small angle scattering data, you really have two options, ASCII and Nexus. And I'll show you both of them. You can attach notes in there and typically using a sample slash folder name for output that's going to generate a file. It's going to have a sample tree one blah 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 here. So you can do it. You can reload the data and that will generate this name here. So now you have this name here. It's going to have an extension .dat. It's going to have a separator which is a pound space and then something behind that. I'm going to set the export folder to this specific folder here. And then I'm just going to say hit export data and notes. And what you can see is that if you open it up in text editor, you see that you have a pound space and something Then you have all the notes in here. Eventually that ends. There's a line with what the wave names were. And then you have three columns separated by tabs. So this is a very common format, which practically most software packages I know will find way to read. So that's and and that's a very old format. If you have a newer package, I believe SAS View or SAS Fit, one of those two can do it. There is a new definition of CanSAS Nexus. So this one is uh, if you check that, it will export an HDF5 file 
which will be uh, which will have data written based on uh, a standard which is HDF5. Uh, it will warn you that since we I don't know about anyone able to uh, use slit smear data, you have to desmear them first. So it basically says you need to be worried about exporting this. You say yes. Um, you have a choice of exporting single Kansas nexus with multiple data or multiple nexus files. Uh, depends what you want to do. And then you can simply hit uh, export. It will write a uh, file with extension H5. Let me just close this one here. It's the old one. And then I'm going to grab this one. So this is a new file. We created that. Inside the file is a hierarchical structure of data. There's lots and lots of metadata. So you can figure out what's all in there. And, and, and this is a much easier to read for, for software than, uh, than the ASCII file. Uh, because the software can much easier understand this. And then, of course, what you can do is you can go in and there's a way to export multiple data sets. So you can go in here and you can export multiple ones. So you select them here and then you hit export. So this is for small angle scattering data. If you have powder diffraction data or you have a... So and, and you can use USEX data or QRS data, it doesn't matter. You can go here and you can load these data and then you can export these data. And what happened? It just happened. Oh yeah, we just overrode them. And now that is that is now exported there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so you can export those. Uh, the other thing which you can do is you can export for powder diffraction data, which would be down here, you can load them, okay? Uh, you can export GSAS to XYE data. These data will export uh, two data uh, as, so, so in, in Nika, you can use these data, even as a powder diffraction, they have a Q as the X axis. Uh, in Nika, you can generate D or two data. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't care, and, and you can do either one of those three. Uh, but for GSS2 or other software packages in powder diffraction, you actually need the two data. So this tool, if you select that, and uh, then you uh, then you run this. Uh, It will generate you XYE data set, and the XYE data set will have a header, which is useful uh, and ugly and big. But then at the end, it's going to have a column of two data, intensity, and error. And so this we tested is readable in the uh, in a GSS2, and very likely in lots of other programs because apparently the XYE data type is common uh, for powder diffraction. And that's what I was told. I haven't tested anything else than GSS2. Anyway, so by now I should be done with this. You now see that there are various ways to extract the data for small angle scattering. You want to use ASCII or Nexus. If you have a software which can read Nexus, Irina can, I believe says fit or says view can. I don't know about the other ones. ASCII should be relatively common. If you have IRENA results and want to just stick them inside your favorite plotting package, you would use IRENA results and export them as ASCII uh, with or without the uh, without the notes about data your choice. Uh, if you want to use powder diffraction, then you probably want to export as GSS2. And that's just about it. That should cover it. If you have any questions, let me know and uh, I'll try to address that.